Welcome to Nursing School Explained and this video in the Care Plan Help series. Today we're going to focus on the protein albumin. Now because albumin is a protein but kind of a special protein, everything that applies in the total protein section also applies to the albumin here. But here we're going to go ahead and look at a little bit more specifically what else we can check when the patient's albumin has either been ordered or is high or low on their lab results. And um, one quick tidbit here, so as I said, same as total protein, but albumin, if that is low, it is usually more indicative of chronic malnutrition. So think about your patients who have had a prolonged hospital stay, they have some sort of chronic, maybe malabsorption issues, those kind of things. So that would be very important to check their albumin levels pretty regularly for this chronic malnutrition because it helps with wound healing and overall well-being and just helps all the processes of the body work more smoothly. But um, if the albumin um, is it shows up on a lab result and it is high or low, mostly if it's low, we want to check a urine dip, a urinalysis to see if we have urine spilling from the urine, which meaning that that protein is seeping through the um, uh, filtration membrane of the kidneys and now we need to look into the kidneys. And if there's any kind of history of liver disease, then we should check all these things that apply to chronic liver disease, meaning edema, ascites, patient's bilirubin level, their skin color and eyes for jaundice. And we should also check the patient for pregnancy and preeclampsia and kind of just note that if this applies to the patient care scenario, because albumin can be low if the patient is spilling it in these conditions and then that re requires a, a definitely close monitoring. So in the patient that we've been using for these examples here in the care plan help was this 45 year old female after cholecystectomy with a past medical history of diabetes, hyperlipidemia and she's a smoker. So in her case if we are analyzing the, the albumin level and we don't really have any history here, but if she did have a history of liver disease or even thinking about the connection of the liver and the gallbladder, meaning that these two organs are very closely related and that common bile duct empties the bile and now there could be some obstruction after the cholecystectomy, maybe a stone got enlarged, there, maybe something wasn't corrected, uh, connected correctly after the surgery. So we definitely have to keep that in mind. All these signs and symptoms of kind of liver dysfunction that we would assess the patient for. And in terms of intervention, there's not a whole, a whole lot we could do about it, but we definitely want to report the findings to the surgeon or the, to the um, MD or the provider that's in charge of the patient's hospitalization and report to them what we're finding and then they, uh, they will take it from there. If this patient now, this is a 45 year old female, you know, she could be pregnant also, we don't have any indication here, but if she was pregnant, certainly we would want to get the OB-GYN consult to make sure that there is no complications from the potential preeclampsia that this patient might be having. So thanks so much for watching this video in the care plan help series about albumin. Also check out all the other labs that I analyze here and also give you a concrete example so that you can show off your knowledge on your own care plan and in clinical. Thanks for watching.